Well, welcome Matt Spangler, Chair of the Needham School Committee, and Andrea Longo-Carter, Vice Chair of the School Committee. You know, I was thinking that uh, it is already, here at September, been a very busy year for the School Committee. You've had mm -hmm. uh, three meetings since July. You had a tour of Boston's Nubian Square, including the Metco headquarters and program. And then you also had a uh, training workshop on uh, roles and responsibility and communication. It's been pretty busy. Um, Matt, what uh, sticks out with you is uh, some of the activity. What, what's been going on? Yeah, well, it, uh, first of all, thanks for having us here uh, today. It, uh, it has been busy, uh, but I think uh, as busy it is for the school committee, it really uh, doesn't compare at all uh, to what the teachers and the staff and students, uh, I mean, that's busy. Yes, uh, yeah. I'm a former teacher, high school English teacher, a high school principal. I remember the beginning of the school year and the days leading up to it. It's like the bar, the ends of the barbell. It's the beginning of the year and the end of the year. And so getting those routines back for all the students having to get up early again after uh, after a summer of hopefully sleeping in a little bit. Um, so, yes, it is busy for us. We've been doing some work, um, but certainly uh, nothing compared to, to what folks in the district are doing. Well, and we're starting the year off um, with COVID. COVID hasn't gone away. However, we're hoping that we can kind of marginalize it and sideline it to some degree. Um, and I think that's, you're right, that energy, our students and teachers are kind of focused on kind of getting back to some of those routines that we were familiar with a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think we've heard that from some of the student reps, uh, certainly the yep. student voice, students that we meet, my own students, yep. uh, my own kids. Uh, it's just there's that return to some of the more normal routines and, and procedures and have, getting to see people smile yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and talk has been for those of those that are still, who are not wearing masks, we know that some students are still, in fact, they're still wearing masks. You know, Andrea, maybe just for a moment, comment on, you had a visit with uh, district administrators to Nubian Square and the METCO program. What, what, what did you do? Can you tell us a little bit about that. So uh, it, we got to tour, tour the area and hear from some Needham students, part of the METCO program, and, and really see the neighborhood and the history. And I think what was the most fascinating to me was when we went into METCO headquarters, I had no idea about the extent of the civil rights activity in Boston around the beginning of the METCO program, and it was fascinating. And I actually think to have that resource really right in our backyard is tremendous and I actually want to go back with my family to really read through the exhibit at the METCO headquarters because it was just fascinating to me. A lot of uh, a lot of history and uh, Needham has certainly been part of that history for well over 40 years uh, with our participation in the METCO program. Yeah, it was a great uh, it was a great visit to a Nubian Square with I think there were about 65 of us all together. Big group. Um, break, broke, broken off into little tour groups uh, wandering around the neighborhood. It was great. Um, so, Matt and Andrea, there is uh, a lot going on in the schools for our students and teachers, and there's a lot of work behind the scenes with the school committee and a variety of different initiatives and, and plans. You know, we have, uh, we're, we're um, in the fourth year of our Portrait of Needham Graduate Strategic Plan. We have facilities uh, issues that are coming up. Mm -hmm. um, we also um, are working with students and staff and students and families who are struggling with mental health issues. Um, and we want to get back to that learning that uh, we, we know and, and maybe do some uh, catch up for some students who, who may have uh, uh, struggled through that. Um, can you, uh, Matt, maybe talk about recently, uh, school committee, we, we talked about uh, some survey results from students regarding mental health challenges. What, what, was, uh, what, what was your reaction to some of the information you heard and, and what we can do about it in the Needham schools? Well, I think it's connected to uh, um, really our training workshop. Uh, a little bit and having an opportunity for the school committee to sit down on a on a Friday morning for several hours and really talk about uh, what are the priorities uh, of the school district how do we as a school committee work together effectively I think it's similar to all the work that uh, teachers and other staff members are doing on a regular basis and not, not everyone might know about all the professional development and training so we're trying to work on um, how we continue to upgrade and, and work together and effectively as a school committee. One of the things we spoke about is the portrait of a Needham graduate as a key focus, uh, both of the district and how we can support that. Uh, but also, yeah, the mental health challenges that it, it's a national uh, problem uh, and challenge. And um, I think uh, last night at the meeting, we received and discussed uh, the adolescent uh, teen survey results uh, from Metro West that really, I think, highlighted and continued to show that um, 
things are, that's a big issue. The anxiety, uh, depression rates, um, just general stress. It's hard enough to be sometimes a teenager uh, moving through right, life and you right. layer on all of these other things that are beyond teenagers control, beyond adults control. And, uh, and then it's up to us to figure out our, what are the resources, uh, both within the school committee, but also within the town uh, where, where folks can get support and help uh, as needed. Yeah, and we're absolutely committed to making sure that in school we can provide the resources and the connections mm -hmm. that students need because there's no question that COVID exacerbated an existing problem. Uh, social media uh, contributes to that problem um, in some ways for some young people, certainly not all. And it's something that we do want to pay attention to. And the school committee has been really quite vocal and active in advocating for additional resources, counselors, for example, to, to work with students and, and to help them. Um, so it's certainly something that we will uh, keep top of mind as this, uh, as this year goes on. Um, so Andrea ma mentioned something, uh, you know, he talked about the Portrait of Needham Graduate Strategic uh, Priorities. Can you maybe really share a kind of a headline or two of what, what is the Portrait of a Needham Graduate uh, for, for the community to understand more fully? Sure. So the portrait really is our guiding, our North Star for the district. It's, it's really what we base all of our decision making on and our resource allocation. And it's thinking about what do our students need to be successful as students and then for their future beyond. And I think, you know, one of the things that came out of our training workshop and, and sort of Matt touched on the renewed energy for being in school, the school committee has that as well. Now that we're sort of through COVID, we're, we're, we're able to really refocus on the portrait and making sure that our students are getting different experiences and new experiences, collaborative, interdisciplinary, and focusing on the five core competencies that we think our students need to be successful in the future. There's a renewed energy on the school committee to make sure that that really is the through line in all the work of the district and that we're really actively communicating that with our, our students, our families, and the broader community. Well, and I know the school committee is very interested in, in figuring out new ways for both the, the staff and for the school committee to engage with families at all levels to make sure folks are fully informed and you're having a conversation with them about what's important for their students. Yeah, I, the other, what's fascinating to me about the portrait too, it's not a school committee developed thing. It's not an administrator. It, this was a true community. I think hundreds of people uh, gathered uh, uh, several years ago uh, for many, many meetings and hours to come up with, with a really a vision and a belief of what we would love uh, our young people to come away with. Not facts and figures, but skills, frankly, uh, like what we're doing today. We are in the high school, in a TV studio run by students right. who are developing uh, incredible competencies around teamwork, uh, decision making. It's a real product. It's a real audience. Creativity. This is exactly the type of yeah. Uh, of, of learning and experiences, I think, that uh, are really, will just continue to um, catalyze uh, uh, the student growth and learning yeah. towards, that, towards that vision. So in our short amount of time, one of the priorities in the, in the strategic plan yeah, involves facilities, and that's a bigger conversation, but there are two things, Andrea. Uh, the Emory Grover School Administration Operation Building that's coming up for um, a renovation, and then more broadly, the School Facilities Master Plan. What's the headline on EG? So the headline on EG is- Emory uh, Grover, Emory EG. Grover. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the project, uh, looks like it's going to cost more than what was appropriated at the annual town meeting in the spring. And so we are going to be coming back to special town meeting looking for additional funds to complete that project. And those additional funds, unfortunately, like many things, have been, you know, inflation hit municipal construction just like it hit us at the grocery store. Uh, labor shortages, uh, energy costs, energy costs yeah. price of concrete, all of these things are driving up the cost of that project, but we hope uh, and really believe that this is the right project for our school administration building and we hope town meeting will support us. Well, Matt and Andrea, thank you for this conversation and most especially thank you for your leadership in this community, helping guide the administration and families as we try to provide the best education for our young people. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Dan. Thank you.